I'm Marianne Elliott and I'm here at New Frontiers 2016 and I'm here with Ian McKenzie, a New Paradigm filmmaker. And we're going to talk a little bit about story and about uh, a new paradigm film that Ian is working on. So one of the questions that um, I'm interested in is the relationship between short form story making, which we see more and more and more of through social media and other um, avenues, and longer form story making. And how do you see them relating to each other? I think with the advent of um, distribution technology like YouTube and cheaper but high quality video cameras, we are seeing an explosion of, of content, of filmmaking in all forms. I think um, given the kind of attention deficit though we have um, with the amount of opportunity people have to watch things, that often, you know, we really look to be caught and hooked really quickly, you know, to get into anything. And so in this way, uh, short form filmmaking it can be really effective as a, an immediate hook, you know, into a concept or an idea that then perhaps leads the viewer into a much longer piece. But at that point, they've already, their curiosity is there. So it's like they've already chosen to like, explore further. Um, but often just having a short piece can be enough. Like you'd be surprised about how significant a core idea can be articulated, you know, and, and have an impact and then shared to, of course, impact others when it's short, when it's concise. And so, again, often that's enough. So I think we're really at a time where um, it's asking a certain type of um, kind of discipline in the art of short filmmaking, the discipline to like really articulate that core idea and then, um, but also give avenues for people to go deep if they really want. I'd also love to hear a little bit more from you specifically about the new film that you shared uh, last night. Um, it's a film that explores an emergent theme, um, an important theme around the feminine, but you chose a very specific um, subject area in which, to ex in, in which to examine that. I'm interested in like, how and why you chose that. Thank you. The, the subject of, uh, well, the rising feminine has been of interest to me. I mean, just as, a, as I look out at the activist scene and particularly, you know, themes in spirituality and um, just this idea that this new world is, is, has a, a very strong feminine component or a new wave of feminine power. And uh, for me, that's, that topic is, is compelling, but also like, unless it's grounded in something, like the real lives of real people, it can often be just too philosophical. And, you know, often you see a lot of films, uh, feature docs, where it's just talking heads about an idea of something, right? And it can be really hard for people to grasp, like, what does that actually mean? So for me personally, um, this story begins, actually, I fell in love um, with an artist in particular. She goes by the name Applecat. Uh, and I actually heard a mix that somebody played of hers uh, back in 2012. And, uh, and they say nothing happened in 2012. But... Um, this mix I listened to it and she'd crafted it and I knew I was like there's something going on here that was different than the electronic music I'd heard um, I didn't know what it was at the time but I had this idea of like that there's something mysteriously um, significant and that actually led to a journey of like seeking her out and, and asking her like what are you actually doing with the way you craft your music with the way you sequence you know tracks with really the field that gets created on the dance floor uh, which seemed somehow different than what might get created with say a man or a masculine, you know, uh, person up there on the decks. And from there, it really launched me in this deep journey of, you know, I was introduced to other women in the scene who are doing very um, kind of similar but unique, you know, expressions of electronic music. And really this deeper question as well of like, um, what unique gift does the feminine have to offer this time? You know, that really became the core of this film. And, and I set it against the backdrop of the electronic music scene. It's not really about electronic music in that sense. The film really became sort of these, these uh, journeys of these women, you know, in their late 20s, early 30s, and their own sort of coming into their own power, really looking at, you know, how do they take the ways that they've been wounded from you know, living in the patriarchy, living in, in a culture um, which often, you know, doesn't honor the feminine, and how do they take these wounds and actually transmute them into their greatest gifts? And that's what, that's what I tried to show in the film. I tried to show that... Um, that that enact, that exact kind of um, uh, wound itself, like you know, it gives us the capacity. I mean, men have a similar but different, you know, mechanism for that. And so, I really just tried to show that, and in that way, just become the platform for these women to shine. I'm going to ask one last question, and uh, I guess the the 
the invitation is um, to see if we can, in sort of as succinctly as possible, name what it is that is different about a personally a personal narrative approach to exploring a question like the feminine rising versus a more theoretical or abstract. Like, what is it that makes it different? What is it that makes it work for you? I think this really uh, speaks to the power of story. And, you know, many, I think, storytellers and even activists and things have come to this realization that, uh, you know, it's very hard to care about something or someone if you don't know their story. And there's something innately kind of automatic when we hear a story, we get bound to that person in some way. And so just like, you know, you hear the story of a Syrian refugee, um, you, know, you know, when it's statistics, you're kind of like, you know, you might have like, wow, that's so, you know, painful to hear, but it still is not real, right, until we uh, experience it through the eyes or, or story of another person. And so I think this actually taps into a deep sense of our humanness, actually. I think it was um, the fellow, um, uh, he did the empathy basically the empathic civilization, um, Jeremy Rifkin, I believe, talked about, you know, humans are built with these mirroring, um, kind of emotional, empath- empathetic mirroring capacities that, you know, once we experience, say, pain or suffering in another, if we really let it in and we experience it as our own, like that ability to kind of drop the barrier between, you know, oneself and the other is like actually one of our deep human gifts. And through telling stories is how we actually, you know, create that, um, you know, en masse and as media makers. Mm-hmm.